and question six. Eight marks for this one. So submarines operate both on the surface and underwater. We're looking at subs. Uh, when operating underwater, the submarine acts as a closed system where there's no interaction with the atmosphere, so that basically means no oxygen comes in and so on and so forth. Most types of submarines use both batteries and diesel engines to provide energy for their provide their energy requirements. A new type of submarine uses a proton exchange membrane, a PEM fuel cell, and a diesel engine. This is a diagram of our beautiful um, PEM here. Just a clear oxygen. Um, oxygen and hydrogen fuel cell. So obviously oxygen is coming in here, anode where the oxygen's sorry, the hydrogen is coming in here, anode where that fuel is coming in, and that all makes sense. What we need to do is state the function of the electrolyte in a fuel cell. So what does an electrolyte do? Well, it's the same as a salt bridge in a galvanic cell. So what it does is it completes the circuit and allows charged ions to flow between the electrodes. Um, it's a go-to answer if you have um, what does a, what's it called, what does a electrolyte do or what does a salt bridge do? You're simply completing the circuit allowing basically the electricity to flow all the way around. So when electrons are flowing this way, going through our load, our anions will be going this way, um, basically completing the circuit and allowing electrons and ions to move freely through our circuit. Next question, write a balanced overall redox reaction for this PEM fuel cell. Um, any overall redox reaction for a fuel cell is basically the same as a combustion reaction, especially if you're using, well, if you're using an oxygen-based fuel cell, um, you can expect it to be the same as the combustion reaction. So all we're looking at here is H2 plus O2 forms H2O. Uh, balancing this bad boy up, we've got two there and a two there. These will be gas. Um, doesn't tell me the, uh, the temperature here. So what I'm gonna be saying is this one will be liquid because um, I'm not too sure. I reckon this probably operates where this might be a gas, but I'm gonna say liquid anyway because there's no clear indication that's a really high temperature. Next, give two safety considerations for the safe storage of hydrogen on a submarine. All right, so safe storage hydrogen. One thing you need to know is hydrogen has to be stored under a really immense pressure. So for consideration must be um, a tank that can withstand very, very high pressures. So that's one thing you need to make sure because obviously if you've got a tank that doesn't um, withstand high pressures, it could explode and you don't want that happening on a submarine. Um, the next thing you need to know is that hydrogen is highly flammable. Um, you need to make sure um, keep the H2 away from ignition sources due to it being highly flammable. Alrighty, an explosive slash explosive, I'll call it explosive. Um, so they're the two go-to things for safety when you're talking about hydrogen, both the high pressure aspect and the fact that it's also flammable. So anytime you talk about hydrogen, make sure you include those two in your response and you should be fine. Um, again, two marks, I've used two dot points to indicate the fact that I've got two separate points there as well. Moving on to part B. State two advantages of using a PEM fuel cell compared to a diesel engine when the submarine's underwater. All right, so we need to be having a comparison. So we need to talk about what the fuel cell does that a diesel engine doesn't do. So one clear obvious thing, anytime you're looking at, um, I guess, hydrogen fuel cells as a method of producing energy, it doesn't produce carbon dioxide. All right, so therefore a PEM will not produce CO2, um, but a diesel engine will, diesel engine will. So again, a comparison, I need to talk about both the PEM and a diesel engine in each of my responses. Um, what else is a good thing about a PEM? Um, lots of things really. Um, hydrogen has is very um, energy dense, so H2, it has a higher energy 
density. Uh, you can clearly see that from our data booklet if you really want to, but you should know that hydrogen definitely packs a whole but a lot more punch than diesel does. It's a higher energy density than um, diesel. So therefore, that's one aspect of it. Um, there's a whole bunch of other things, but I've got two marks here already. So definitely go with um, these obvious ones, which is the carbon dioxide production. Um, you're not going to do that in a fuel cell, particularly, well, I shouldn't say fuel cell, in a hydrogen fuel cell. Um, and the energy density of a fuel cell is good. You can talk about efficiency in here. Obviously, the PEM will be much more efficient. You can talk about the uh, sound. Um, idea of that as well so basically a diesel engine you're going to be combusting something and you've got a lot of moving parts so that's going to produce a lot of sound that's not going to be really um, good if you're looking at um, a submarine uh, a PEM is basically silent so therefore that's probably a good idea um, obviously a fuel cell you don't have those moving parts as such so it's going to be relatively quiet compared to your diesel engine but definitely um, lots of responses two marks two dot points clear as day there Next question, most submarines generate hydrogen gas from their fuel cells when traveling on the surface. On the surface, explain how this H2 gas could be generated. All right, so I need to think about how do I produce hydrogen um, to a lot of different ways, mostly chemically, um, obviously through steam reforming and a few things like that. You may have seen those equations somewhere, but the most obvious one here is you're surrounded by water. So you're looking at, look at electrolysis of water. Electro assists of water where you have H2O getting split into H2 plus O2 uh, basically the reverse of our fuel cell which is going to be two of those and two of those all right so you get electrolysis water where you've got um, water being broken apart uh, it's traveling on the surface so I need to know how I'm going to do that I'm going to say I'm going to use solar panels to you get the energy for the electrolysis water. So some way of doing that would be really good. Two marks, two dot points, both um, how electrolysis water, how do I do the electrolysis? I use solar panels to get the electricity to do the electrolysis. Um, one thing you might not want to think about is if you've got an explain how and question here, and if you just write one aspect of that, I want you to then question, how do I do that? And then you write the next dot point under that as to that might res, um, result, revolve around this. So how do I produce that? I do that by electrolysis of water. How do I do that? I use solar panels to get the electricity to do that. So therefore, I've got my two marks there. How do I use solar panels? Well, I probably you probably don't need to go into the engineering of actually fixing the solar panels to the, um, to the submarine, but I think that's pretty much going to be your chemistry-based stuff there. Hopefully that helps, um, and question seven coming out soon.